I'm tired of buying foundations and them not being my shade, you guys. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time ever watching a video of mine, hello, my name is Lanye. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about my foundation collection. Um, if you follow me or have been subscribed, you know I'm a makeup hoarder. And I love, like, pretty much everything about makeup. I love collecting a lot of things. But my favorite two things would have to be concealers and foundations. Mainly because it's been such a struggle for me to find um, a foundation shade range that really works for my skin tone. Um, and also, I watch a lot of YouTube, so I follow a lot of different girls, and a lot of them have suggestions, and I get PR. So there's just a bunch of different things that uh, make me a foundation hoarder. So anyways, if you guys are interested in seeing how I accumulated 30 different foundations and what those 30 different foundations are, then please keep on watching. So am I completely proud to say that I have 30 foundations? No, but yes at the same time, you know. Um, I have way more foundations in my collection just because I am a freelance makeup artist on the weekends, so I have a crap ton of foundations around my makeup room. If you see, if you came to my house and came in my makeup room, you would be like, girl, I don't even have half of that. And for me personally, I'm going to get a little bit off track. You can forward, fast forward through if you want to see me talking about the foundations. But for me, it's such an um, it's such an accomplish accomplishment, I guess you could say. I started out with like literally no makeup, and if I can find the pictures on Instagram or on my Facebook page, I'll post them in this video. But like my makeup collection was so small, and then. Over the past like six years, it's just gradually accumulated and gradually got better. And I'm just really blessed to say that I'm on a lot of different PR lists and I get a lot of different PR in the mail. So, 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 so happy for that. But anyways, I'm just going to start with the front. Um, if you followed my Instagram stories when we moved into this house and I really did this room, I picked up some of the container store um storage systems so this is one of the drawers i think this is the large athletic shoe box and it is filled to the brim so i have way more than the 30 that i counted but i have duplicates of a lot of foundations so i just kind of count them as one since i think that's fair so my probably favorite foundation especially winter time is the cover effects uh, total coverage cream foundation that comes in a compact I know it's kind of really old school but it's a cream foundation and I still haven't gone to re pick this up because I always I feel like brands are always coming out with new foundations and I'm always like behind if I'm not on their PR list to pick up something so I think I might reach out to cover effects and be like hey <laughs> you know you send me lots of product I need a re-up on this but this is my favorite foundation it's in the shade in 100 that's why I decided to start with this I love using it with like a buffing brush um, from Morphe and just buff it all over my face and it just gives me such a flawless finish and I'm not sure how much this retails for I think it's anywhere between 38 like 28 to 38 bucks but I'll try to like add um add a price tag right here somewhere right here <laughs> So this might come as a surprise to you guys. I used this in yesterday's video. It is the Pat McGrath Sublime Skin Fetish Foundation. This is in medium deep 27. And I really didn't like it when I first used it as a first impression. It took me probably five different wears for me to be like, I really like how my skin and my face looks afterwards. So that just goes to say that uh, you can be turned on to a product just like music. Like for me, I might not like, it, like a song when I first hear it, but... A couple of songs, a couple of listens later, I'm like, this is my shit, you know? So, with this foundation, it is so pricey. I, if I wasn't doing it for a review, I definitely would have, like, passed over it because of the price tag. But I do like the, uh, the finish that the foundation gives me. So, next is the foundation that I'm wearing today. This is the NARS, I think it's the Natural Radiant Foundation. Yeah, Natural Radiant Foundation in New Calendina, or New... Caladia, New Caladia. 
Um, I didn't pick up this foundation for a very long time, mainly because when it came out, so many influencers were reviewing it and using it and talking about it. And to me, if other influencers are just like on a roll with it, I'm just like, I'm not going to review it. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to do anything because I feel like it's just overhyped and not all influencers are completely honest in their reviews and their tutorials and things. So for me, I, it's a little more pricey. I think it's like 48 bucks. So I was like, mm. and then it came to Ulta, my Ulta in town, it came to Ulta and I was like walking around and I'm like, we have NARS here. Like what? And I decided to pick it up because I'm like, I want to try it. Now the vibe has died down and it's still a lot of people's favorite foundation. Now, let me go ahead and try it. Um, especially in like the winter months when my skin is getting drier. <laughs> Actually, I had a lot of flaking on my brows today and I was like, hold up, what? This has never happened. So my skin is getting a little drier and I'm not really used to it. So a foundation like this that has a natural radiance as well as the Pat McGrath is really good for my skin right now since it's not going to be overly matte and overly dry. So leading into the next foundation is the NARS. Uh, this is the All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. I was obsessed with this foundation. I still haven't rebought it. It's the same bottle that I started, <laughs> that I bought uh, probably like a year or two ago, probably like probably two, almost three years ago, honestly. So it needs to be thrown away, but I keep it so I know what shade I am. I am in the shade Trinidad in this foundation. It's dark one and I need to pick this up. So I really like that it's like liquidy and it's lightweight, but it's full coverage. That's what I look for with foundations. Um, this one is a little thicker in consistency, but I do like this consistency a little bit better. Um, and it wears beautifully. It's a little more of a cooler undertone of a foundation, but I'm going into the winter months so I can get away with more of a neutral cool tone foundation, but in the summer, um, especially without me even being in the sun, I get so red in undertone and just neutral base foundations don't look good at, good on me as they do in like the spring or the fall, winter or spring. So this next foundation was my jam. When I first got into makeup, probably about three or four years ago, this foundation was my everything. This is the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation. I know that she has been in a lot of controversy lately, but I still love this foundation and I'm not throwing the foundation away. Like, period poo so <laughs> y'all can keep your opinions and, and all of that to yourselves but this is one of my favorite full coverage foundations when i had a lot of uh, dark spots and hyperpigmentation and things like that this foundation covered everything and i looked flawless every single time so i have two foundations in this uh family i have a deep 78 which is neutral this is the one that i use the most because it's a little darker and it's more neutral and then I have Deep 74, which was the darkest shade that they had at the time. I've had this for probably three years. Um, and this one's a little more red in undertone. So right now, this foundation would be better. And this one would be better in, like, my winter months. But this foundation is so full coverage. Like, I love it. I love it. So moving on to my next favorite foundation. This is actually the foundation that I wore for my wedding. Um, this is the Morphe Fluidity Full Coverage Foundation. I didn't want to like this foundation because I know that it was so hyped up with Morphe and all of the influencers that get commission and all of that, but this is the bomb.com. I went to Ulta and I purchased this foundation myself because I wanted to check it out and see what all the hype was about. And I believe in the hype. It's full coverage. It's extremely matte. Like it's like tight matte, like, but it's so beautiful. And I love this color. This is F. 4110. I think that they had a really good shade range and like I said so full coverage the concealer is one of my favorite concealers I know I don't like a really thick concealer but I do like a full coverage concealer and that's why that one is probably one of my favorites plus I like the the tones I feel like they had a lot of different undertones and a lot of different shades and that was major key so the next foundation that I really, really, really was like obsessed with for like the first two weeks that I had this foundation is the Dose of Colors um, Meet Your Hue Foundation. They sent over three different shades. So I have 134, 136, and 138. 138 is way too dark. I actually probably shouldn't even keep it in my drawer because I've never used it, but I do use it for clients that are way darker than me. 
but 136 is my actual shade 134 is a little light but i keep it in here just in case i need it for later months like the fall or like the fall and the winter but this foundation is very lightweight but very full coverage and that seems to be a trend for me lately i like for my foundations to be full coverage but i'd like for them to be lightweight so this one does just that and the shade is beautiful um it does not oxidize or anything like that on me which i do really like the only foundation that i own that oxidizes on me is the pat mcgrath sublime skin fetish foundation that's the only one that oxidizes but i appreciate that it oxidizes because otherwise the shade would be completely bad on me so i really appreciate that but this foundation is one of my top probably five foundations at the moment and we'll get into what my top five are that you must buy after i finish all this and i think this is going to be a 30 minute video so if you don't have your glass of wine or some popcorn or some chips or your dinner then <laughs> you're gonna be here for a while babe so another foundation that i obviously love i'm starting with foundations that i love and wear all the time this one i go back and forth with because it's full coverage but it's very thick so this is the milani conceal and perfect foundation this is the uh two-in-one foundation and concealer i mix spiced almond with golden toffee because golden toffee is way too warm spiced almond is way too neutral but they are like two shades in between this is 12 and this is 14. And i'm not sure if they have a 13 but 13 might be my perfect match so if they do please let me know um but this foundation is extremely full coverage extremely thick but it gives me probably the most flawless finish of a foundation after that was my ring okay after everything is completed and everything is like on it is so beautiful like this foundation with the morphe concealer the morphe setting powder and like whatever else that i put on blush highlight everything else i'm like girl you are fine you know like it just it just makes me over so this next foundation I really like. I just don't like that I have to mix two shades because it's more expensive than say the Milani foundation. Uh, the Milani foundation is probably like 12, 14 bucks. This one's probably like 40 something, 36, 40 ish. This is the uh, Stay Naked, Urban Decay Stay Naked Weightless Liquid Foundation. Um, and the thing with this is they sent over a pamphlet and you had to like pick your shade. You got to pick two different shades. And to me that was just kind of productive like I don't I don't know I need something to swatch so I wish they would have sent like a teeny tiny bottle sample size bottle of like all of the dark shades and you can swatch them and then let them know which two or which one or which two are your your most perfect shades because I was just so confused like how am I supposed to know if it's on a piece of paper so for me, it was just confusing, but I like that this foundation, once again, is lightweight, but still full coverage. So for me, this foundation is a mixture between the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation, which they came out with probably three years ago. I loved the, that foundation until the shade became a little wonky on me, and they're all-nighter foundation. So I feel like they took both of those foundations, discontinued them, and then came out with this one that was a nice hybrid between the two foundations because the naked skin was really lightweight but it was full coverage and the all-nighter was very full coverage and very like thick kind of like the Kat Von D foundation so I do have a review on both of those foundations from like three years ago and a comparison and I just was all over the place with that because I liked both of those foundations it was just the colors were crazy um but this one they came out with way more shape made way ooh, <laughs> way better shade range and um, the consistency is still really great okay so this next foundation is an oldie as far as like how long i've had it but i love 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 it so i have two shades of this this is the la girl pro coverage high definition high definition foundation i have a coffee and i have a toast and uh, coffee is a little more neutral and toast is a little more warm but i adore uh, this foundation I haven't used it in quite some time um, because it does transfer so this is one of the one foundations that I love but I don't use a lot because I feel like it transfers so like if I go like this it'll be on the back of my hand like it'll literally be on the back of my hand and I don't like that but I do love how it's lightweight full coverage and just really pretty like it's just a really 
pretty foundation on my skin. Uh, it is more affordable too, so I really do like that, but I do need another um, coffee because I've had this for a while and it's like all the way down here, almost gone, but I know I can get away with using toast since it is a little warmer and I am a little warmer right now, so love this foundation so much. Then I have the NYX Total Drop or Total Control Drop Foundation. Y'all remember this foundation? It was so popular. Everybody and their mom was doing it in an Instagram video, dropping it all over their face and all of that crazy stuff that they were doing. And I have the shade Deep Sable and Cappuccino. Deep Sable is, like I said, a little more neutral and Cappuccino is a little more warm. If you can tell, I always have a warm foundation and a neutral foundation, especially in um, foundations that aren't crazy expensive because when you look at the swatches online you see they look very similar so you're like oh, I guess I just have to grab two because I don't really know so that's always my case but Deep Sable this is my second one of this one and I love this foundation once again lightweight but really full coverage it doesn't have the transfer issue that the LA Girl Pro coverage does um, but it does look really good on the skin and once it dries down it settles and it looks really 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 beautiful so the next foundation is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. This foundation is a lot of people's favorite foundation. For me, it's it's not it's a nice foundation, and I like the shade. This is 550 Suede C. But there's always a miss for me. I don't know why. Um, I just don't pick up this foundation too often. Sometimes I get in a groove where I'm like, that's the one foundation that I want to use for the week. But I haven't been into that groove mainly because. I've gotten other foundations that I really like, but, excuse me, this one's great. It's full coverage. It has a crazy, amazing um, foundation range because Lancome, they cater to a lot of different colors, but I don't know, it's just, I don't know, it's just a, it's a one of those meh foundations. So the next one is the Milk Makeup. This is the Flex Foundation. I do have another Milk Foundation. Uh, it's the... It's actually up there I don't keep it in here because I don't wear it often um, but this one's the stick I do really like the stick stick foundations used to be one of my favorite ways to wear a foundation one of the main reasons that I like to wear a stick foundation is because it's really easy to apply so you literally just take it swipe it all over you can blend it out with your fingers you can use a brush you can use a sponge it's just a bunch of different ways that you can apply this foundation and you can also use a lighter shade to highlight a darker shade to contour Milk also does have a really nice shade range. I just really like the products that Milk has been coming out with later. Their gripping primer, their highlighter is one of the highlighters that I have on my cheeks right now. It's been one of my go-to highlighters lately. Um, a lot of their products that they've been coming out with have been just really, really, really good. Um, so that's this. The shades that I have in these is Warm Deep, Golden Deep, and Tan. And I kind of rotate between um, Warm Deep, and Golden Deep, and Tan. I I just repeated all three names. Anyways, I rotate between the three. Sometimes I'll use Warm Deep because it's the darkest one. I'll use Warm Deep with Tan or I'll use Warm Deep with Golden Deep depending on which two I grabbed that day pretty much. All right, we are chugging along. I have the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation. Oh my gosh. If you guys, if you watched me four years ago, this is probably like the only foundation that you saw me use because it was my go to like it was beautiful on my skin. It was a moussey kind of texture. Um, you could squirt it out a little bit. It would go a long way. It covered all of my dark spots and it was a really nice warm tone foundation. And this foundation was just everything. I think this was only like $28 or something like that. So not crazy expensive, but yeah, I really like this foundation. I really liked it. This is in the shade Rich Rich Honey. Yeah, Rich Honey. That was the shade. So this next foundation, I don't pick up as much as I probably should. It's another drugstore foundation. This is the Super Stay, Maybelline Super Stay Full Coverage Foundation in the shade Mocha. And last year, yeah, last year I was like all about this. I think that's when it came out. And I was like, it was it was my jam like I love this foundation so I don't pick up this foundation much mainly because it's in the middle of my container so I don't I like overlook it a lot but there's not a reason why I don't use it especially with it being winter or summer um these past couple months the shade would have been perfect it is a little dark on me in the winter time but 
Mocha, it, this foundation was was great. It was it was full coverage. It was drugstore, so affordable, and the shade was pretty good. So I just need to use it more. So now I'm getting to like the last couple of foundations that I probably haven't picked up within the last six months um, that I probably should throw away because it's just pointless. So two of them are stick foundations. I have the ColourPop uh, No Filter Stick. This is in 185 Dark. I don't know why. Oh, this one's a little light on me. That's why I don't wear it too much. Um, this is a little light and a little warm. And then I have the Makeup Revolution Foundation Stick in F14. And this is a little cool. So it's a cooler of a tone foundation. So I usually mix these two foundations together, but I haven't reached for them lately. I'm really glad that they're really affordable. I think this is like 12 bucks, and I think this is like 10 bucks or something or another. So I don't feel um, hurt that it's expensive and I'm not using it. There's just nothing really bad for them besides the colors, you know, but yeah. I do also have the ColourPop Liquid Foundation, but it's not in my shade range, so I just have it over there. But that one was one of my favorite foundations for like the longest time. I love, 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 love the consistency of that foundation, but I just don't have a shade and I just haven't really thought to buy another one. Okay, so next is the Cover Effects Natural Radiant Foundation. This is an N100. It's almost gone because it was my jam probably like three years ago. I don't like uh, this. This natural radiant foundation gives me a little like um, greasy kind of look, I feel like, as opposed to the NARS natural radiant. This one doesn't give me a greasy kind of look and this one does. So this is why this one stays to the back of my, excuse me, my drawer. Plus it's too tall to stand up in it. Um, but it also is a little dark for me, so I can only use it in the summer months, and it seems as if I missed that. <laughs> so this foundation, it's a great foundation. It's full coverage. If you are a little more dry in skin, it's going to work a little better for you because it does give a natural radiant look. But just for me, it's just, it's, it's, it's a no for me, dog, like for right now. So this next foundation is... A really great foundation and a lot of people have raved and um, just love this foundation. It's the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. This is in the shade 177. And this shade is way too like cool light for me. So I usually mix it with the stick foundation which is in 178 and this is a little dark and a little warm. So the two of these I usually mix together because this one's a little light and this one's a little dark and they're one shade. Like they're literally this shade and then this shade and that's it, no in-betweens. And I need something a little bit more in-between because this is just way too warm and this is just a little too neutral for my liking. So mixing the two is really great for me, but I wish I didn't have to mix the two. So um, I'll probably end up getting like 178 in this one and 177 in this one at some point so that way I can use the foundation a little more because I do like this. I do like the consistency of this. It's full coverage. It's not ultra matte, but it's matte enough. Like it's like a natural matte kind of finish. So love both of these. I just don't use them often because the shades are off. And that's that's the trend for a lot of these foundations. So this foundation I know is some of you guys' holy grail. This is the Fenty Pro Filter Foundation. I just, every time I go to the store to get a nice correct shade, it's out of stock. So I think I need 430. This is 440 and 440 is too warm. And I have another one over there, I think it's 480. Like I just, I'm tired of buying foundations and them not being my shade, you guys. Like, that is my struggle. That is my issue. Um, it's like I go to the store, or most of the time I order online because I'm going to be, like, one of the first ones to review it, and that's what happened with this the first time. And the second time I went to the store and 430 was out, and I'm like, I think 430 is my shade, but let me go ahead and buy 440. Like it, it's not, it doesn't look that bad. And then I do my makeup and it's like, it's just a little too warm. And if I had a blue color corrector, um, I could mix it with a lot of these foundations and take that orangey kind of color out of it, but I don't. So maybe I should get one from LA, LA girl next time I go to Ulta 
So that way I can use this foundation. I just mix this, mix it with a little bit of blue, and then it'll it'll have a nice warm tone, but not overly warm. Because I do like the finish of that foundation. It's it's a nice comforting matte. I just don't really get to use it. So now I'm down to the last seven foundations. The next one is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation. This foundation, I know they just came out with a stick. I am probably not going to buy it just because I don't really feel like it. This foundation is extremely thick and extremely full coverage around the same <clears throat> rounds of the Urban Decay All Nighter and the Kat Von D Locket. It. It's that thick kind of pasty uh, consistency. And I don't have a problem with it. This is in the shade Burkina. This is the best shade that I got out of like the three that I ordered, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was like three shades. Um, just personally for me, like I mentioned with the Kat Von D, I'm just going away from the thick kind of pasty um, consistencies of foundations. But this one's not, it's not a bad foundation. It's just not where I am right now in life. You know what I mean? Like two years ago, this would have been one of my top fives that I listed at the beginning of the video. Um, but it's just not for me. So this along with Kat Von D, along with the Tarte Amazonian Clay, along with the All Nighter are great foundations, but they just, you know, I'm not going to use them. You're not going to see them in the video <laughs> for a very long, for a very long time. So this foundation is an OG Holy Grail. This is the second foundation in this, um, the second shade that I've gotten in this foundation in the second bottle. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, and I'm in the shade um, 6N2, which is Truffle. And I really do like this because even though it's a neutral base foundation, it still has some of that warmth. And this I used on a client this past weekend or last weekend, and she looked so gorgeous. Like, but she had a lot of like dark spots and things like that, but she looked so flawless after she was done. It, it was so beautiful. So for me, I haven't like just haven't picked it up pretty much. This pump came off of a CoverGirl foundation, so um, I need to either look into their own pump or getting a screw top for it because the pump is clogged um, because I haven't used this foundation in quite some time, but it's like, it's like anti-transfer, it's full coverage, um, it's a nice matte finish, like it, it was like the OG of OG foundations. Everybody had this foundation in their collection and everybody talked about it. And they have a really, really nice shade range as well, like the Lancome Foundations. So this foundation is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. There's nothing wrong with this foundation per se. Um, I just don't pick it up because Chai is maybe a little too golden for me. Um, when I looked at pictures that I've taken using this foundation, I feel like it's just a little lighter. So for me, it just stays at the back burner. As well as their concealer, like I have one of their concealers that is a little dark for like under eye, so I use it to carve out the top of my brows. Um, both of the products are really nice. It's a full coverage foundation. It's really beautiful. It has the coconut water in it. It's medium to full coverage, um, oil free, a lot of things like that. But it's just for me, just a miss on the shade range um, or shade because I feel like the next shade up was a little too dark for me. So I ended up picking up Chai. I think that's what it was. But if you have a shade in this and you love it and we're like shade twins and a lot of foundations let me know what you use because i would like to use this foundation especially since i'm going towards more of a natural radiant kind of um less matte kind of more natural um but like that greasy foundation let me know because i would like to use this but i just don't know about the shade i just feel like the shade yeah it's just, and the thing is jackie Ina uses the shade so i was like yeah that's my shade but not really, not really. So these next two foundations, I'm just going to lump together because they're both nothing spectacular. I probably should throw them away uh, because I don't use them. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir. I've had this for probably two and a half years. Back when I worked at Walgreens, uh, CoverGirl came out with this. It was just a healthier foundation. It has sunscreen, it had vitamins, um, and this is Soft Sable. Uh, yeah, it expires February of 2019, so that was this past February, so it should probably go in the garbage. Um, but this foundation was nice, it was, uh, it was full coverage, it was beautiful, but yeah, it should probably go in the garbage. Um, and then this is the Revlon, uh, what is this, Colorstay 
loved this foundation. I went through like two bottles of this probably like a year or two ago because I was obsessed with this foundation. It just was so beautiful. This is in the shade Cappuccino, so it's a nice, deep, warm shade. It also has SPF 15, so it protects from the skin um, or from the sun and 24-hour co coverage, and it was for comboed or oily skin. The main reason I gravitated towards this foundation is because it was like one of the only drugstore foundations that had a dark shade for me, so I was like, yes. Plus, everybody loves this foundation. Like, it was literally a holy grail foundation for everybody, and it was drugstore. So this is the infamous all-nighter that I've been talking about. It should probably be thrown away as well because I haven't used it in forever. It's in the shade 10. It's a little warm. It's really thick. It's really pasty. It's really full coverage. It was my everything a few years back um, because of that consistency. It was really pretty, and I loved it until I felt like the foundation was too red and too warm for me. So then that's when I stopped using it. And then this year, what, two years later, I realized that I needed some type of warmth for my skin, and there it was. So, that's this bad boy. Um, I think it is discontinued, uh, but I love the packaging. Look at the packaging. It was silver, and it was just edgy and just urban decay. So, this baby right here is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Wear Foundation. It's in 6W1 Ganache. I ordered this. Um, well, I didn't order it. They sent it to me, but I looked on the website to see what shade I should get. So it was another, another one of those look online, get it wrong foundations for me. It was just not the best. So it didn't like, it's not a crappy like foundation. It's just a crappy shade. So it just seems to be a trend for me with foundations. I just get crappy shades or they just don't look good on me. And then the shades that I really do like, I stick with, I love, and those are like my top five foundations. So speaking of top five foundations, this is at the moment, okay? This is at the moment, right now. My top found five foundations would probably be Number one would be the Dose of Colors uh, Meet Your Hue Foundation. This would probably be my number one foundation. This is the one that looks good on everybody. Literally, I've used it on clients. I've used it on myself. It matches with any or it goes well with any type of primer. It's just the bomb.com. Plus, the shade is amazing. My number two. <laughs> I know. I know. My number two is the Pat McGrath Sublime Skin Fetish Foundation. I just really, I don't like that it's not full coverage, so let me state that. I still don't like that it's full coverage because I have to use too many pumps of foundation with this foundation because they're lighter pumps since it's a little more lightweight of a foundation. It comes out more liquidy, so I have to use way more pumps than I would, say, my Dose of Colors foundation, but I do like the overall finish, and when my makeup is completely done, like yesterday, I looked flawless period poop number three is my cover effects natural or total cream coverage foundation i know i need to get a new one i bet you're sitting there like if that's her favorite why doesn't she have a new one literally i get so many foundations that i'm just like i just can't be bothered to rebuy so i'm just lazy and every time i go to ulta i just get distracted so it's definitely something I need to repurchase, but at the moment, I've just been, when I use it, I've been scraping the sides. Like I go in with my brush and kind of like get along the sides and it still applies very, very beautifully. So this is my number three foundation. So number four for me at the moment is the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation. <clears throat> I'm really glad that I gave into the hype to try it out. This is the foundation that I have on right now and it looks really natural for my skin. It looks really beautiful. So this is my number four foundation. And my number five, I'm kind of in between like a couple foundations. Um, if I had to choose like not having to mix, all of these foundations are foundations that I don't have to mix. Let me state that. It would be the Make uh, Morphe Fluidity Foundation. This is my number five top foundation. It is beautiful. I love the color. I love the coverage. The only thing, like I said, I'm going going into the whole more natural kind of finish as opposed to extremely matte and tight. 
Um, I don't really get as oily as I used to, and I don't wear a lot of makeup as much as I used to as often, I should say. But if I'm going to be out all night, wedding, um, club, you know, just whatever, if I'm going to wear my makeup all night, I'm going to wear this foundation because it wears very, very, very beautifully. So this is my top five. So once again, we got the Dose of Colors. We've got the um, Pat McGrath. We've got the NARS. <laughs> and we've got the Cover effects, so all extremely expensive foundations. I know uh, the cheapest is probably the Morphe, then the Dose of Colors, then the Cover Effects, and then the NARS, and then the Urban, or and then the Pat McGrath. I know all very expensive. Slap me in the face right here. But I mean, it's a nice mixture, drugstore, and then the rest are kind of prestige. But you know. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was extremely long. Don't kill me. But, I mean, I had to get through 30 foundations. And it was a crap ton. I even started yawning halfway through. So I don't blame you if you don't make it all the way through. But if you did, please give this video a... Please give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> also, don't forget to subscribe before you go. Leave me a comment on what your top five foundations are. I would love to know. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.